This is a special zero hour report about uh, the armed uh, militia encampment in Oregon. Joining, And by the way, we're recording it on Tuesday to get a, the quickest update we can, even though it's a weekend program. So if something different has happened between Tuesday and the weekend, we'll cover that in another segment. But joining us now is our good friend, Linda, Linda Torado. She's the author of Hand to Mouth, Living in Bootstrap America, and she is a writer covering the beat of stuff that happens that's interesting, basically. Uh, did I get that close, Linda? I think that's about as close as anybody is going to get it, including me. All right. Well, Linda, <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on the program. Happy to be back. Now, you've just spent how long? You've just spent at least a week with uh, the militia that's taken over the wildlife refuge in Oregon, right? Yeah, yeah, I've been on the ground a week. Um, it's actually uh, five days, and and honestly, militia is the wrong term. Okay. Um, there are militias there that are represented, but it's not like a militia came in. Um, the the Bundys came in with some supporters, and they're getting a lot of support from militias. Um, but but that's a very specific term, and it's one of the things I've been fighting against. Of like, no, no, they have guns. They're not a militia. They're just. Uh, from the Rocky Mountains, everybody has guns. All right. So, well, uh, yeah. No, I think that's a great distinction, and and I want to get into what you saw there. So it sounds like basically there's at least three, and probably more, from what you're saying, uh, groups of people involved, and one is. Let's say the militia uh, factions or that that are there. Right. So you've to... got the three percenters of Idaho who are a militia. You have the Pacific Patriots Network who's affiliated with the three percenters and are also a, a militia group. Um, you have uh, some some locals uh, filtering in and out, uh, and you've got a whole bunch of groups that have signed on that I haven't seen any representation of on the ground. But really what this story is, and everybody's focusing on, on the fact that armed men took over a federal building, which, you know, there's, there's a heck of a story there. Um, but what the story actually is, is it's a story of federal overreach and, and of uh, the Bureau of Land Management just absolutely defying the law um, and putting people in real harm. And so you've got this populace that's been dealing with this for kind of over the last 20 years or so. Um, and, and they finally have had enough. And here comes Ammon Bundy a, a couple of months ago, went up to Oregon and started, you know, telling them, hey, if the federal government isn't going to follow their own rules, then you don't have to. They, they've delegitimized themselves. And, and we go back to the Constitution, and the highest authority in the land is the Constitution. And they're going back to all of these, like, incredibly old rules and telling them, hey, you can set up your own citizen's grand jury. You can indict and arrest your sheriff. You can take control of, of this stuff and take it out of the hands of the federal government, who is, is not only mismanaging the land, but is also refusing to follow uh, the, the laws as written. Yeah, um, but isn't... It isn't the mistake there, Linda, that even if that's true, that uh, that they're mismanaging the land. And we all know that the government does things we don't want it to do. Uh, I think people on the left and the right can agree about that. But and even uh, people on the left and right should agree that. You know, let's say peaceful occupations or protests or sit-ins and sit-ins or uh, civil disobedience, which is law-breaking, are part of the range of expressions we use in this country. But I guess what I'm struggling with is, it does. If the federal, if the Bureau of Land Management is not following the Constitution or the law, who says that Am Ammon Bundy is a guy who gets to interpret what the Constitution and the law really says? Well, and, and that's where you get that kind of break with reality, um, where they, they start from a, a legitimate place. And I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, the, the locals will tell you this. They're, they're fairly split down the middle. Nobody's happy that he's there. But nobody can deny that there wouldn't be any press to check into what's been going on in Harney County and the surrounding counties if he hadn't done that. So where the locals are splitting now is everybody's saying, well, if they were going to come in with guns to get press coverage, which is what he initially stated, um, then they should have left when the press showed up. 
And if they'd come in without guns to occupy until the press did its job, then that would have been okay, too. Um, there, there's an awful lot of people that, that are pretty sure he's crossing a line here. But you do have to realize these folks are ranchers in rural Oregon. The, the refuge that they took over is something like 30, 40 miles from the town of Burns, which is the only reasonably sized town in the entire county. So these folks aren't constitutional scholars. And when you've got somebody coming and saying, hey, you know, the law is being broken and even your congressman can't do anything about it, uh, let's go back to the Constitution. That that resonates a lot with folks who are, who are kind of that, that rugged individualist. I mean, the, the reason that everybody is wondering why everybody outside of Oregon is freaking out about the guns is not a single rancher wanders around without, you know, some kind of sidearm. Uh, because they range over hundreds and hundreds of miles. So I, the, the cultural difference is huge here. You know, it, 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 we've talked about this on this show before. Uh, you know, I was raised, I mean, my father had a gun. You know, I, I, I know how to shoot a gun. I, I think there is a kind of a divide there that, it, you know, where there might be alliances. But all of that said, I, I guess the other side of it is if you if you point a gun at a federal law enforcement person, which these guys, I don't know if they've done it in Oregon. I know no, they, they did it. At, they have not. Right, but because they backed off. And, and But at the Bundy Ranch, they did it. That's a law. Yes, that's a crime, you know, and. and and so I guess here's here's what gets me about this. And here's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you, Linda, because I know you have a point of view that is not standard left on this or standard right. But why is I guess let me phrase it a little differently. Is there I look at these these folks in that part of the country. I look at some of these folks who are conducting this occupation. I vehemently disagree with some of their inter most of their interpretations and uh, more than half of their strategy, uh, at least. Um, so I'm definitely like not in their camp. But on the other hand, I also look at like the economic facts of what it means to to be. Uh, candidly, a white American in certain parts of the country where opportunity has been taken away from you, where the economic situation is grim and so on, where, where it, to me, at least in my interpretation, some people feel like they've been forgotten. And I mean, on and on. And I think, why isn't there a natural ground for an alliance between you some... Know, you know what I'm saying, right? There actually is, yeah. So so here's, here's where we come down. Like, uh, obviously, the the strategy is is um, you know to be hyperbolic a bit, friggin' insane, um, and and a lot of the things that they're saying are just as nuts. But the point here isn't the Bundys necessarily. The point here is you've got a rural community that feels so cut off and, and has done, and, and I've looked into this over the past you know, few days. I've been talking to ranchers in the surrounding counties. There are so many instances where they would have something illegal happen to them. Um, like one guy had a 99-year lease. The BLM pulled it after 30 years and just shut his ranch down because they wanted his water rights. Um, and, and he went to his elected representatives for redress. They, they actually passed a law through Congress uh, to make sure that that wasn't happening. And the BLM kind of went, well, we, we actually just want the land, so we're going to take it regardless. Now, when you have that kind of overreach and that kind of disregard, and then you compare that with, with the economic you know, picture that, that they're facing, especially in rural areas, that's where you come up with this unrest and, and, you know, strategy and tactics and all of that aside, what the ranchers in Harney County are left with is they have no more legal course of redress. They have exhausted their legal courses of redress. And, and because rural issues are so hard to understand, every time somebody reports on it, they go, oh, the ranchers want public land. Well, no, the ranchers want the public land to stop just coming in and unilaterally grabbing it without any compensation and putting them out of business. And that's, I think, an entirely separate thing. So the Bundys are really taking advantage of, of that kind of unrest and that, that feeling of, of, of what do we do now? We've got video evidence of the BLM setting illegal fires on our pastures and, and nothing's being done. And when you hear that, that's where that natural alliance comes in, because the, the folks I've talked to are, would not equate 
uh, say, a, an extrajudicial judicial killing by the state of a, of a black person with, you know, losing a few acres of their ranch. At the same time, you can't help but see the parallel of the government is doing something illegal and extrajudicial. Here we have video evidence, and there's going to be no indictment. There's going to be no punishment. And in fact, if you step up and talk out about this, we're going to punish you further. And that's known as well. See, here's here's a, a couple of thoughts on the one. It, it, what, one of the things that came into my mind when you were talking was during the 60s and 70s and in, in the inner cities, uh, they were doing what they called urban renewal, which involved a lot of displacing African-Americans and eventually led to gentrification and displacing African-Americans, not just temporarily, but permanently from certain parts of the city. And I mean, I even remember Aretha Franklin saying, you know, urban renewal means urban removal, you know, and mm-hmm. a, and so there there's a certain parallel there. But I guess I where the and, and I know I know you're saying they're in same basically if i interpret you correctly but the bundys and the ranchers i think that's that's where the story keeps getting into trouble is people keep conflating what the bundys have done on on with the story of what's going on in the county the fact that the bundys came in and did this was a reaction to what's happening in the county but this wasn't you know the ranchers didn't ask them to come in here and do this this is a populace that one week ago i or just over a week ago now saturday before last or two Saturdays ago when the show aired, um, you know, our, a bunch of people came in and said, hey, we're going to rescue you, and it hadn't asked the ranchers right. yet whether that was the way that they wanted to be rescued. So now you've got a bunch of folks that are that are basically confused and don't know what to do. They're and I, hearing and I've all read sorts coverage, of stuff in all sorts of directions. Yeah, and I've read coverage that says a lot of the local ranchers don't want them around because the Bundys, their agenda to me is not... Uh, is not uh, you know get redressed for whatever grievances the ranchers have. They 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 don't want the federal government to exist at all. I mean that's the well, way. It's that's a little less nuanced than, than the reality here. Um, so so what's happening is you've actually got a case with the Hammonds that that is in real dispute. Um, yeah. And I haven't looked in enough to that to to say one way or the other. I will say I've been out to their land. I've seen the property. I'm from Cedar City, Utah. It's the city that Ryan Bundy lives in. Like I know me some fire breaks, and I'm telling you, there's something there when the locals say that wasn't what happened. Um, there's something to that. And then you've also got all this other stuff going on. So Ammon comes in, and initially what he said was, we're here to bring attention to the plight of Harney County ranchers. When they first took over the preserve, that's what the line was. And within four or five days, that had changed to, we're here until the citizens of Harney County step up and, and, and do what they need to do to protect themselves. And so the ranchers, actually, the, the town of Burns is 100% opposed to this, mm-hmm. 100% opposed. But the ranchers in the surrounding county are kind of split because, on the one hand, they want them gone. This is extra drama. This is extra stress. This is splitting the community. I mean, you've got people screaming at each other in marriages. You've got friendships of 20, 50, 30 years breaking up over this. <laughs> on the other hand, they did everything they could think of. They did everything they could think of. They towed the line. They've cooperated. They've gone to Congress. They passed a yeah. friggin' law and nothing. So then you've got these guys come in and say, hey, we're willing to put our butts on the line and go to jail or, or, or maybe even get into a firefight. And we're going to do this on your behalf because somebody somewhere should be standing up for you. And we recognize that if you do it for yourselves, the risk that you are taking is going to put you and your family out of business. You won't have a livelihood. We know you can't stand up for yourself, so we're going to do it. And so a lot of folks in the, in the ranching community, are, are, they, they find the tactics abhorrent, they find the strategy lacking, but they can't help but be like, well, but nobody else was going to do anything. You know what I because, think, Linda? again, the press wouldn't be there if the Bundys hadn't done this huge dramatic thing. And so the, the community is very kind of six and one half a dozen the other. Nobody likes, I think what you hear over and over is I hate that they had to come here. That's well, yeah, what you hear. I, I get that. But, you know, I, I guess what I keep thinking, Linda, is that, uh, and we're talking with writer Linda Toronto, is, is that... This is really I've taken like civil disobedience training and, you know, you're Mm -hmm. told you're breaking the law, man. You're going to jail. You know, Mm -hmm. this is the deal. Uh, And uh, and it's nonviolent and all that. Maybe uh, I, I keep coming back to this idea that there that we need an alliance 
with other people who are protesting injustices uh, who are equally powerless, you know, and, and, we and, do. and, and, and I think the thing that you'll find too here is that particularly with the guns, when you listen to these folks talk and I've sat down and had this conversation with them of, of why the guns. And they said, you know, that's the reason we're not getting picked up. They would have come out here and arrested us and nobody would have heard it beyond which they are. They, and they're right about this. There is no law against them carrying weapons as long as they're not pointing them at anybody. And they haven't yet. And, and what they're saying is we will not point these weapons at anybody, but we are not going to leave ourselves defenseless. Now, that's kind of a, a particular side of the, the gun issue to come down on. But they see themselves. They, they, they've been asking me why nobody else is arming themselves for protests. And I'm like, well, because of John Crawford. Um, because of, you know, how many hashtags can I give you of, of black people with right. toy guns or thinking that they have guns? I said, these people are going to die. Where the, you know, they can't do that. And they go, oh, well, you know, that sucks for them, but they, I, we bet they would if they could. Well, and, you know, and, and that's where so there's that. Yeah. yeah. And you, and you get all this anger. Why don't they, you know, arrest them? Uh, cause they would kill African Americans for doing it. They would. Yeah, and, 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 absolutely. And, and, and I think the answer is the injustice that's gone on here. Right. Nor does it negate the fact that these people are, no matter how abhorrent you find their version of it so far, they have been peaceful. And this is a civil disobedience. The fact that people are scared of weapons, the fact that they are, you know, dis disturbing to a lot of people doesn't change the fact that they are legal and that they have not been used in an offensive manner so far. In fact, at the Harney County uh, town meeting last night people were talking about the fbi agents because so far the militias haven't really gone up to town and scared people the people who are standing on point the people who are standing on street corners it keeps turning out to the fbi so the people are now asking you know well if, if we keep being frightened if our children are being frightened by the fbi and these guys that are supposed to be terrorists are sitting out there on the wildlife refuge you know carrying guns looking like big men well, you know, who's who's actually scaring us and where is the terror actually coming from? And again, you know, these are these are rural ranchers, dude. Nobody woke up a week ago thinking that they were going to have to deal with the international right. media and a bunch of armed gunmen on the Fed side and on the, you know, whatever. They thought they woke up. They thought they were going to go feed their cows and throw hay. Well, I, mean, I guess if I having season. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And, and I, I hear you. And I, I guess I would just say that if if I could talk to the Bundys, I would tell them. What I learned in civil disobedience uh, school, which is, okay, you made your point, now take your punishment like a man or a woman, as Gates may be, and if there are women. And that's what the locals are starting to say, yeah. And, and, and that's, I mean, the locals were saying that up front from the town of Burns. The ranchers are starting to turn in that direction. But, you know, it, it keeps coming back to, and they keep coming back to, no matter how many times, no matter how much they want to hate it, and trust me, most of them do, no matter how much they want to hate it, they keep coming back to, nothing was being done. These guys got something done. Because every journalist they talk to, everybody who writes a story about what's going on in Harney, everybody who's writing a story about the BLM, you know, acting illegally and unilaterally, about life-risking fires, about people's livelihoods being overturned because some civil servant somewhere was, you know, basically winning a pissing contest, none of those stories would be written without these guys doing this. And so the philosophical quandary that we really have is when the government overreaches like that, even if we're not sympathetic to the victims of the injustice, even if we find them horribly distasteful, is it or is it not our job to stand up to that injustice? And if you've exhausted all of your legal peaceful measures, when is it okay? To do what the Bundys are doing, and that's what the that's what the county of Harney is having to grapple with right well, now. Well, well, it's an interesting story, a fascinating story, and uh, I really I appreciate your take on it. I and and I get it. Linda Torado is a writer speaking to us on Tuesday from the Boise, Idaho airport, and uh, have a good flight. And thanks for yep, coming thanks, on the program. <laughs> no trouble.